three pillars. The three pillars are 1. Nam Japo, which is meditation on God and the reciting and chanting of God's name. Which is, by the way, meditation is really good for you, and modern science shows that there's way better... Okay, so first of all, I don't know how good meditation is compared to just sleeping, okay? Every single scientific evidence that, is that I've seen that meditation is good, the, the control group was just not meditating. I have a hypothesis that all the time people spend meditating, if they replace that with just more sleeping, the benefit of more sleeping is more than more meditating. I don't know if this is true or not, but I think that the science, the control group in all the scientific literature has just been people who just don't meditate. Like they do like, oh, let's compare people who meditate compared to people who don't meditate. Okay. Um, and the science shows that there's, they seem meditation seems to be great. But what if you s compare people who meditate and compare, you know, you have one group is people who meditate and then compare it to people who just spend a lot of time relaxing and self-reflecting, but not necessarily meditating. Would there still be a difference, right? If the same time was spent on just like chilling out, right? I don't know. There needs to be a study on that. David, uh, David is saying, Sikhs in India try to bring a law that anyone who de uh, desecrates their holy book will be sent to prison for 25 years. Wow, so they have their blasphemy too. The Indian government declined. Well, thank you, the Indian government, for declining that. Now get rid of your own bl other blasphemy laws as well. Now, meditation is pretty all right. Meditation on God, on God is awkward. Yeah, I mean, even if meditation is uh, uh, good, I'm pretty sure they ruin it. These religions, the Buddhists and the Hindus and now the Sikhs, they ruin meditation. I'm pretty sure if we let the scientists figure out the best way to meditate, it's going to be way superior than what these religions like. Oh, here, repeat this name a thousand times. I'm pretty sure that's the best way to meditate. Nope. Nope. I don't know what this is, but okay. Oh, by the way, David, thank you so much again for another $5 super chat. Very, very kind. Very, very generous. And thank you to Soha and AGA for constantly. Look at this. AGA and Soha always thanking the people who are doing super chat. You guys are so sweet. Thank you. Way Guru. This is normally done in the morning and before bed. This isn't supposed to just be some mindless ritual. E sounds like prayer. Sounds like Islamic prayer. Okay. Sounds like more. Yeah, morning and night. Yeah. So it's just basically the five times salat is being replaced with two meditations. And Muslims also say this is just supposed to be just like um, a ritual, mindless ritual. You're supposed to connect. Yeah, exactly. This Muslims say this. You're supposed to connect with God. You need to be mindful of it. They say that, but they don't do it. They go through the motions and they don't even pay attention to what they're doing. So I think this is exactly what's happening with the Sikhs. Either six are supposed to genuinely reflect yep. on the qualities of God. Yeah, I've heard that many times. That's Salat in Islam. They tell you every time that you need to, you can't just do this prayer five times praying and mindlessly go through it. You have to, you're supposed to genuinely reflect on God, okay? But pe most Muslims don't do that. Most Muslims just quickly go through the motions to get it over with. They do this. Two, Kirat Karni, working hard and making an honor. Wait, so you need to meditate to, again, meditation shouldn't be about, if meditation works, meditation, the right meditation, the scientific, the one that science shows that is good and all. Um, oh, wait, one way to, here, you could check out this book. Waking Up, you know, I'm pretty sure you could learn more about meditation by Sam Harris's Waking Up book, way more than uh, Hinduism, Buddhism. Um, and Sikhism could teach you, right? But my understanding is that meditation does its job not when you get rid of the ego, but when you know when you see the ego, when you're like, oh, I see, I see, you know, it's a higher level of consciousness. Like you, are, you are aware of your ego. But again, you can't eradicate. You can't. You can't destroy the ego. I, I, come on, if you if you destroy your ego, you turn into a vegetable. Okay, you just turn into like you're not going to be able to do anything. You can't get rid of ego and. Stop miss, yeah. Miss living. Guru Nanak said, only he who earns his living by the sweat of his brow and shares his earnings with others has discovered the path of righteousness. Three. Wait, I completely missed in the, uh, all of that. What is this? 
Kearney, working hard and making an honest living. Gould and Axe said, only he who earns his living by the sweat of his brow and shares his earnings with others has discovered the path of righteousness. Okay, okay. That's good and all. But you know what helps with that? You know what helps with working hard? Ego! Ego! You need your ego to notice yourself and be like, yeah, I'm a hardworking person. I'm so proud of myself. Look at the job that I accomplished. Wow, so great. Look at the art I produce. Oh, I'm a great artist. Oh, look at this. Look at the work that I did. Look at the people that I'm helping. Oh my God, I'm doing so much great work. Pats on the back. Oh yeah, I'm so proud of myself. You know, that's what you... How c how could you motivate people to work hard without their ego? You need, you need to, for them to reflect on themselves as being a hard worker and being proud of the fact that they're hard working to do hard work. Okay, that's the reward you get. The reward you get for, hard, for doing hard work is to notice that you are a hard working person. So that's not getting rid of ego, that's using your ego to be able to, to reward yourself to, do, to get through the day. Right? Because you can't just like work hard for rewards of it coming down five years, ten years from now. You need short term rewards to motivate you to go through your day. So how do you get short term rewards? Even though you're working to build something, you know, ten years from now, how do you make sure you get some some little bit of, you know something to motivate you through the day? By being proud of yourself, of being so good at the work you do. Okay? So again, don't get rid of your ego. If you want to do hard work, if you want to be a hard worker, you use your ego. Notice your ego, control your ego, manage your ego, use your ego to make your motivate yourself to accomplish great things. Again, Guru Armin is the only guru you need. For the path of righteousness. Three, wand chakna. This is sharing the fruits of your labor with others. <gasps> Commies! I knew it! <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I'm kidding. Sick! Commies! First they said they're anti-wealth. Now they want to share everything. They're commies! Sikhs are commies! <laughs> I mean, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, no, sharing is not bad. I'm kidding. Sharing the fruits of your labor with others. Providing free food and donating to the community. The Sikh tradition of a... Yeah, yeah. So, guys, I'm just kidding. I'm, I don't have against uh, anything against sharing. I'm against forced sharing, okay? No, you could you should be you should be do charity, you should care for other people, you should share. Um, you know, it's good. I mean, you shouldn't, but it's good if you want to share. But what the problem with communism is not that people are sharing. The problem with communism is that they're forcing you to share, okay? Voluntarily sharing is fantastic, okay? But the, yeah, of a communal meal or lunger at the Gurdwaras is a part of Wand Chakna. The lunger. Let me see what you guys are laughing at. Uh... Or communal free kitchen inside of a Sikh Gurdwara, which is their equivalent of Wand. Okay, so th we have some socialists in the live chat as well on Twitch. So this is this that side. As someone socialist, let them. I'm gonna ex tell them what. Okay, six are so rich in Canada they ain't sharing their wealth. I mean, to be fair, in Canada, if you want free food, you just have to show up at one of the temples and you get free food. So, yeah. And Chakna, the lunger or communal free kitchen inside of a Sikh gurdwara, which is their equivalent of a mosque or church, is open to all who visit, regardless of caste, faith, or gender. Okay, but what if I insult their guru? Would they self feed me? So this is pretty good. Like, it doesn't, you could you could show up as a Muslim, as a Hindu, as an atheist, and they'll feed you. Okay, but would they feed me if I insult their living guru? If I blaspheme against the living guru, can I still show up at their temple? And would they feed me then? Has anybody ever tried? Guru Armin, yeah, hashtag, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Make that a thing. Hashtag Guru Armin. These serve. Oh, here. Katie is saying the question is whether so many Sikhs would still share food if it wasn't for their religion. Are they good people or are they trained by their will? Yeah, so is it, are they chat? Are they doing out of the kindness of their heart or are they following orders, right? I have 
I believe that they're doing out of the kindness of their heart, not because of their religion. So I'm hoping that these people will still be charitable as they are, even if their religion was not ordering them to do so. I hope so. Vegetarian. Oh yeah, it's all vegetarian. Adam saying, is this food vegetarian or non-vegetarian? No, it's all vegetarian. Vegetarian. Regardless of caste, faith, or gender. These serve vegetarian food to all, not because six have to be vegetarian, but simply because that means all people of all diets can partake. So, ah, very considerate. So they make vegetarian food so that Muslims don't have to worry about halal, um, Jews, don't, and nobody has to worry about pork, and Hindus don't have to worry about beef, and vegetarians don't have to worry about meat. So if you want to taste typical Punjabi food, just go visit a Gurdwara. In Guru Nanak's... That's very considered. Uh, David, super... Thank you again for another super... Wait, did I miss a super chat? Oh, no, yeah. But, oh, f yeah, I, I, I didn't, but I, I didn't acknowledge it. I didn't thank you. Uh, so, Shan Taram with the five-pound super chat. Thank you so much. Wow, I read your super chat, but I, see, that was my ego because I was distracted by the fact that you're saying Guru Armin that I didn't even thank you, okay? So I need to keep my ego in check. But you're boosting my ego, so it's not my fault. But thank you so much for the five uh, pound super chat. Um, and here's, thank you, thank you. And David is also another five dollar super chat saying, in Thailand and Myanmar, if you insult Buddha and Buddha, uh, Buddhist clergy, you will be sent to prison for several years. Jesus Christ, really? That's crazy. Well, we'll talk about that soon as well. But thank you so much for the five dollar super chat. But guys, does anybody have the knowledge of what Sikhs would do if you blaspheme against their living guru? Will they still feed you? Uh, Sri Chand insulted guru and was still fed. Oh, Abu Lahab did not. Wow, <laughs> I love your username. Abu Lahab did nothing wrong. Love the username. So Abu Lahab did nothing wrong is saying. Somebody, some dude apparently did insult a guru and they still fed him. Okay, that's pretty, I mean, we should give them, you know, let's give them that. That's pretty nice. Let's give them credit where credit is due, right? That's pretty impressive, okay? That's good. I like that. Time, the idea of different castes sitting together on the floor and eating side by side was a revolutionary act. Famously, the Mughal Emperor Akbar visited Guru Arjan and the Guru would not meet with him until he partook in a lunger, which the Emperor did, sitting side by side with peasants. Guru Nanak claimed an enlightened person are those... See, this is what Jesus and Muhammad were teaching as well until they took power. Okay, so this is very... If this is how religions usually start. Maybe like Sikhism never managed to gain so much power to move to the next phase of telling people to shut the hell up and obey. But they all start by going to the poor, go to the poor because the poor are always like upset with everybody in power because obviously they're poor. Are you just like, hey, you guys are poor, you shouldn't be, we are equal to everybody who's rich. I mean like, oh yay, we like this in your religion. And then you use the poor to become powerful and then we become powerful, then we'll see something else happens, right? But usually that's how it starts, right? Muhammad, how did, how did Islam start? How did Islam start? Who were the first followers of Muhammad? They were poor. They were poor who were being oppressed by the Qurayshi. Okay, they were, he was the, this, you know, that was his first people, right? What did Jesus, again, the same thing, right? It was the poor, right? Zartosh, it was like, oh, look at all these poor people being mistreated. Yeah, yeah, again, same thing, right? So, it's basically, I mean, if you want to make a new religion, it's just, I think it was Scientology was like, I'm going to do it the other way. I'm going to go with the rich first. But most religions, to gain a following, you have to go with people who are upset with the current order of things. And who are the main people who are upset with the current order of things? It's the poor, usually. Right? Uh, Katie's saying the Sikh empire was kind of strong, I guess. Some Sikhs are crazy about the... Uh, um, Khalistan, Khalistan movement even today. Interesting. Sajib saying, I love Sikhism and will be always be grateful to Sikhs for saving us. India would be Islamic Republic if it weren't for them. Thank you, Sikhs. Nope, so this is wrong, Sajib. 
Um, good people do good things uh, regardless of religion. So you should be thankful to the people, not to the religion. Okay? Uh, give credit where credit is due. Give credit to the individuals, not to the religions. Muslims have done many great things. I never thank Islam for the good things that Muslims do. I thank the Muslims. Christians have done many great things. I never think I never give credit to Christianity for the good things that Christians do. I give credit to the individuals who did that, right? And Sikhs, Sikhs do many great things. I don't give credit to Sikhism for the great things that Sikhs do. I give cre credit to the individuals who did that, and not to the entire collectively to the, all the Sikhs or all the Christians and all the Muslims. I only give credit to the specific to the specific individuals who did that specific thing. Like for example, a lot of people tell me, like, Armin, you should be thankful to Hindus. Why? Why should I specifically be thankful to the Hindus? Because the Hindus uh, protected the Parsis, which are your people, from the Muslims when they ran away from uh, the uh, Arab invasion and came to the India. I'm like, okay, first of all, those Parsis, those Zoroastrians, if you haven't noticed, I'm not one of them right? They died many years ago, so I don't know why I should be thankful for something that had nothing to do with me just because, what, I'm Persian and all of a sudden I'm one of those, I, you know, I should be appreciative by association to those people, right? First of all, so they weren't me. Second of all, I am thankful, not because those people were Parsi or for, because they were from Iran, but because they were human beings, and I'm not thankful to Hindus as a whole, I'm not thankful to Hinduism as a whole. Uh, I'm just thankful for those specific humans who help their fellow human beings. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I don't look at it as Hindus helping Persians or Hinduism g getting any credit for that. I just look at some, some humans at some point help some other human beings at that point. That, those specific people. I'm not grateful to Hindus as a whole collectively because of the actions of those specific people at that time. doesn't make any sense. Again, this is kind of tribal thinking. Oh, your tribe helped my tribe at that time, so I'm forever grateful to your tribe now. What? No. Those specific people did some great thing. No thanks to Hinduism, okay? Just thankful. I mean, hopefully no thanks to Hinduism, because if it is, I'm hoping it was out of the kindness of their own heart rather than following orders from their religion, right? I think it was they were just being humanists, not Hindus. They were being humanists, not Hindus. Okay? Uh, Turrell is saying spot on. Uh, it was not because of Christianity that the U.S. Def uh, defeated Imperial Japan. And I credit Americans for that, not Christianity. Yes. Right? And I don't credit Muslims for the golden age of... The golden age that they call it, they call it the golden age of Islam. I call it the golden age of Arabs and Persians because it wasn't because of, it was a golden age, but it was no thanks to Islam. Uh, there wouldn't be an organized force if it wasn't for the religion and wouldn't be uh, able to defeat. No, there would be a better organized force if it was um, under something other than religion. If it was evidence based, like we saw um, the Enlightenment movement happening in Western Europe. That wasn't under a religion. I think mean, they would have been if people united under real things rather than fairy tales. Um, they, that is a source of unity, and it's a much more powerful source of unity. Oops. It's a much more powerful force. We've seen it be a much more powerful force. People, religion doesn't have a monopoly over people getting people together and fighting for civil rights. Many civil rights movements have been fought not under the umbrella of religion and they have been a lot more effective okay so just because some people manage to f unite and become a powerful force under religion that doesn't mean that it's the only way in fact i would have i think it would have been even better if it didn't have the falsehood of religion associated with it to view everyone equally like the heir touching the king by side with peasants guru and that claim an enlightened person are those who view everyone equally like the heir touching the king well everyone is not equal so that's bullcrap and beggar alike another vital part of sikhism that isn't one of the three pillars is seva which is selfless service true service to their community Sikhs can become more humble and overcome their ego seva guys do not do selfless service make sure you're always paid of your worth for your service 
can include cleaning up the gurdwara, preparing food, or cleaning dishes in the longer, or it can include... Know your worth, okay? Your time is valuable, okay? Make sure you are, you're valued for the work that you're doing. Volunteering, building things for your community, or subscribing and ringing the notification bell on... Ed oh my god, that is such ex that's so clever. Yes, guys. Yes, please. Okay, fine. Do one selfless thing. One selfless thing. Like this video, <laughs> okay? Just that one selfless thing. The notification bell on educational YouTube channels. Um... Kraton is saying, a friend of mine credits his people, the Maratha, of, for, of resisting the Mo Mughals uh, and saving Hinduism. Everyone says their people are the best. Nothing new. Yeah, everything. Like, oh, yes, these people. Again, if you ever say this entire group of people are good or bad, you're just generalizing. Uh, you're being tribal. You're doing black and white thinking. Every group of people have their share of good people and their share of a-holes okay do not generalize like yeah i love persian people i love iranians i love the sikh people i, I love muslims oh i hate this group of people yeah if you ever talk about an entire group of people just as a whole uh, like that whether it's positive or negative then you're dumb okay through remembering god's name honest work and sharing along with selfless service and avoiding the five thieves a person can rid themselves of egoism and be released from the cycle of rebirth and death